Well, hello everybody out there in Facebook land. It's Ruth Ann here with the very first live streaming of Art of the City. And I wanna thank you all for joining us. Hopefully we'll have more people coming on as we go. But I felt like it was really important since we are all on lockdown, most of us, to bring art into your home and into your office or whatever space it is that you're in because art is such an important part of our lives and it really documents the time periods that we live in. So this whole streaming will continue every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And we are gonna be bringing you artists, live interviews in their studio so you can see what's going on with their lives and with their art. And then we're also gonna be bringing in chefs and winemakers and musicians. So it's gonna evolve as time goes on. So if you have anybody that you'd like to see on our show, definitely shoot me a private message and we'll see if we can get you on the show. But most of you, some of you know me, some of you have known me for a really long time. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ruth Ann. I'm the owner of Exclusive Collections Gallery. I'm here in my gallery as we speak and I've been in the art business for 30 years and I've um, been a gallerist for 25 of those years. So I started with the gallery without a gallery in the back of a U-Haul truck doing uh, pop-up shows before pop-up was even a thing, me and my mom. And we pretty much bootstrapped ourselves, carried art, lugged it in and represented artists in hotel rooms. And then eventually we opened up our first gallery. Some of you probably remember La Jolla and um, that's where it all started. And then it blossomed at one time we were crazy enough to have seven galleries and now we're still thriving 25 years later. So that's a little bit about me. And one of the artists that has really impacted the art world that I've been able to represent for the last 17 years is the artist that you've all come to love and know. And that is the artist, Michael Floor. So behind me, I have some really incredible Michael Floor pieces. And once I get the hang of this camera, I'll be able to walk you through and give you kind of a live tour. For now, you kind of get to see what's behind me. But Michael started um, right out of college. He came to my gallery in La Jolla in 2002 and just came in with this funky little notepad and his um, makeshift portfolio and showed me his artwork. He was actually discovered by my next door neighbor who um, is a chef and is now the um, founder of Burger Lounge for any of you who visit um, his restaurants. And he came in and I was completely blown away with his artwork. And he said, I've got a year left in school. A year later, he showed up with his paintings and history was made. So some of you watching were a part of that. And you've been able to see his artwork explode to over 100 galleries throughout the world. He's impacted many of you as collectors in your lives. And I think that one of the pieces that I wanted to bring on the show today that is so important is this piece behind me. And hopefully it's not too blown out, but it is a older piece. It's been sold out for probably a good 10 years. One of the very first limited editions. This is actually part of Michael's personal collection and it's called Martinis and Jazz. And the reason why I wanted to bring this on the show was I feel like this piece really is the epitome of what Michael's work is all about. So you can see that We've got uh, jazz uh, players up on the stage. You've got people here enjoying drinking their martinis, having really a great time interacting with each other with the social commentary that Michael's so famous for. And I think it's really important right now because this is the first time in the history of the world where we cannot go to these places, sit down, have a martini, or anything, or even go into a place and listen to music. So I think it's just really something that is, um, it's a good time for us to reflect on the importance of how art really reflects the things that are important and dear to our hearts. So I just thought I would bring that up and, you know, I'd love to have you guys fuel any questions that you have, but right now I'm gonna see if we can get the one and only Michael Floor to uh, come on our show, which is probably what you've been waiting for. So let me see if I can make this technology work. And 
Let's see here. Ta-da! We did it. Oh, we're not, we're not live yet, are we? We're here. We're live. We're on Art of the, Art of the City. Oh, shoot. I didn't have time to do my hair. Because <laughs> I can't get a haircut anywhere. So I'm like, it's not. Well, let me try to fix it a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. It looks pretty good there, Michael. It really does. I'm around, I'm around too much paint thinner. This is so it's cool. Hi, everyone. So, Michael, I know you've been like the rest of us on lockdown. Tell me a little bit about what's happening with your life, with kids and everything. We're, uh, we're all hanging in there. Actually, Melissa's right here to my left. Look, you can see her. Come on in real quick. We're trying to see, are, are people able to see Ruthann? Is it live on Facebook? It's live. People can see yeah. you. And we've got all kinds of, oh, geez, wait a minute here. Hold on. Hold on. What? We've got some really incredible collectors. We've got the McCready's and happy birthday or happy anniversary I saw to you guys. And um, of course your mom, Sandy is watching. We've got uh, a lot of collectors feeding in right now as we speak. So feel free to type a little something guys. We love to yeah. have this interaction with you. And Melissa will call in a couple of our little offspring in later. So Michael, tell me what has it been like um, just being, I know you work at home, but yeah. um, what is it like having three kids being at home while you're working at home? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I've always, I've, we're kind of used to it because I'm at home a lot and, and the kids are here with me, but now it's, yeah, it's tough, but it's, we're finding a lot of cool little gems in, the, in there that are, you know, hanging out with family more and eating dinner together more. But then there's frustrations too, but it's awesome. We're all going to get through it and I know it's going to get better. So uh, I've just been telling people I've been binge painting, just been in the studio. That's all I can do. And it's been, it's been awesome. I'm excited to see, I can feel this, the different energy in my, in my painting. So I, I think things are going to, it'll, there'll be a shift in this, in the style or the energy in the painting, which is cool, which I think all artists will have some kind of shift. I know, I know I've had a shift in my hair, but <laughs> I think I've so, um, had a hair shift. Do you guys have any tips, you and Melissa, of how you keep your kids busy while you're, so that you have the time to paint? Yeah, I mean, uh, they've kind of all gotten accustomed. They know when I go in the studio, but we also, we thought it would be a good idea to go get eight baby chickens <laughs> just to have some more things to take care of. So the kids are, 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 are taking care of those. It's given them a kind of a responsibility. So they, they're taking it. So in about a couple months, we'll have those silkies, the ones with the big furry hair. And Oh, that's, that's where you got the hairdo from. Yes, the chicken, like, but no, it's, it's been, it's been, it's been good. It's, I mean, it's, it's an interesting time. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think all art is going to have a, a shift in it. There's going to be great artists that are forced to, you know, maybe there's some artists out there that are really great painters and don't, put as much time into painting now they're going to be forced to. So maybe people will break through to another level of skill. Yeah. Here comes a chicken. Melissa's going to bring a little chicken for us to see. Okay. Great. You guys hear the chickens? We hear them. Here we're. This is help. It bring, I got to have wackiness in my studio. There's, here's one of them right here. Right on my, on my shoulder. This is one of our little chicks. Oh, so cute. So we got to wait. I mean, it's hard to get eggs now, but we got about six months till these guys start laying. They're more for just fun. Yeah, they're more well, for let's, fun. But... <laughs> let's hope we don't have to wait that long, really. No. Are we going to start seeing chickens in your paintings? Maybe. Maybe a couple of the feathers. Bye, little oh, guy. thanks for sharing that. But those are little things to get the kids' mind off of being stuck with their mom and dad all day long. You know, I was sharing this piece behind me. Maybe you can give some commentary. And thank you for letting me take this piece from your personal collection, yeah. this martinis yeah. and jazz back here. I hadn't seen that one, well, besides in my storage for a long time. I think that's, someone was asking about that in another gallery a couple months ago, if we had any left. And I was like, I don't think so. I do on my personal collection, but I have a certain amount. I save, I want to try to save at least three of each print for my kids. But and oh, as you know, nice. I get about, you know, I get a little bit more than that that I try to save. But 
So I like to release those every once in a while. So that one is Preservation Hall in New Orleans. And uh, that's this beautiful little cafe that you go in. You can't take photos, so I had to do a kind of an undercover sketch in the, in the place because they don't want people taking photos. So that was my impressionation of that. Was this the piece that you created when you and Melissa were on your honeymoon? Yeah, at you know, 17 years ago, we couldn't afford Europe, so we went to the closest place was New Orleans. So that was from back then. So that painting is probably, yeah, 16 years old or at least. Uh, that's awesome. This is one of those pieces that's extremely rare, very hard to find. I think the current value on it is uh, $6,000. Yeah. And um, Michael has given me this one piece to make available to collectors. So we can talk about that later. But what are you working on now? Uh, now I have just finished a cool New York scene. As you can see in the back, it's um, right down uh, what avenue is that? But it's one of the coolest views of the Empire State Building and uh, all the blues. And I, I was really using some kind of electric kind of cobalt and ultramarine blues that really shine in this one with all the I noticed too last couple paintings I've done at home I've been a little more whiskey and like sketchy with the brush I don't know if that has anything to do with it but it has a cool energy into it and it's uh, awesome. of course you can see in the background I mean I could probably take let me see if I, I was going to say up. is there any way that you can um, um, move the towards us so we can get oh wow look at that so that's that that one really came out cool. You got the couple under there, and uh, you know it looks like uh, at night with some of the headlights in downtown New York. And then of course I got my palette there that I just cleaned. Looks right. kind of organized. <laughs> That's my great chaotic mess in my studio. That's where all your paintings come from. Is all this wild paint and color. That's where the magic's made. Yeah. And behind here, you know, we have a little cool surprise that I'm going to unveil here behind that painting. That's not just a painting of white snow. <laughs> That's your modern abstract uh, version yeah. of Michael Flores artwork. So, Michael, can you just give a little bit of a uh, tell us kind of what, you know, what your process is during the day so that people yeah. now that we're, we're live in your house, we can get yeah. an idea of how, what you do, how you wake up in the morning and how you actually uh, come to these amazing compositions. You know, how do you grasp that information? Yeah, it's Bring like, it to the canvas. Um, I think it's, I just try to take all the, it's like, remember when you were in school and they would have you put a word in a circle and then you branched off all the ideas from it. It's kind of like, for me, it's the reverse of that. It's like I have, uh, I have all these ideas and I got to bring them into a, a single composition. So my composition is in the circle. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> Usually when you're in school, they'd write like a turtle and then you'd write all these things off of it, slow, hard shell. To me, it's the opposite. It's like I have to, I have my ideas, the circle, but nothing's in it. So I have to bring all the adjectives or all the memories and experiences from the outside in. So it's kind of opposite, but that's how I work. I just see, see memories and experience things and uh, ignore people at dinner when I'm not looking at them because I'm looking at how the sun or the light is coming in on the table. And my wife says, hey, pay attention. But I'm like, in my head, I'm looking... <clears throat> I'm looking at ideas and shapes and colors. So well, that's how my that's mind works. Awesome. It's, it's, a, it's a chaotic mess, and then I have to put it together. Do you work more in the morning or in the evening? What, what's, your, um, what's your preference? Well, when the kids are in school, I, mornings are not my favorite. So I, I would start like 9 o'clock or 10 and paint till 5 or 6. And then after they go to bed, sometimes paint a little bit after that. But lately I've been painting – kind of from 10 o'clock on all throughout the day. And now that I don't have to get up early for school, so I'll, I'll be getting <laughs> a little bit. So it almost feels like back in the days when we didn't have kids. Because now I can, I can let the kids sleep in a little bit, catch up on sleep and stuff like that. But they've that's been doing, okay. they've been kind of doing their own criteria of work and school. So that's been kind of cool to see what they kind of want. If they had the choice to, we're not making them follow a perfect regimen of exactly what they would do in school. I think it's a unique time to maybe 
let them kind of go their own, find their own interests that they like. So That's kind of like almost a, t a test of homeschooling. But also we've realized that we probably don't want to do homeschool because that's a lot of work. Kudos Let's hope none of us have to do that. Yeah, kudos to the people that do that. But everyone always says, oh, I can homeschool my kid. But wow, it would be a lot of work. I agree. So I know that we that you, you have a piece that you've been working on. I know yeah. this whole, this whole uh, lockdown has made it a little tricky for us to yeah. keep things moving in the direction like we normally do when we have a new piece that's being released. Um, but this particular piece... Um, is this this original painting, one of our collectors who happens to be on right now. Um, oh, Nathan? Yeah, they, they own it. Yeah, they're there. Say hi to those guys. Um, they own the original. And tell them a little bit about how the inspiration um, came about for this particular piece, because there's yeah. a pretty special relationship you have with Maker's Mark. Yeah. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll give a little story without telling about the piece, I guess, and then we'll, then we'll unveil it. But yeah, it was... You know, as you know, Rob Samuels reached out to you a couple of years ago, wanting to have an American artist exhibit at the Maker's Mark and do some work and commissions. So that was a huge, amazing thing. And we decided to make it a huge show with all the galleries, best VIP clients who we all went out there and uh, drank lots of bourbon and had, what, 15 or 18 of my pieces that sold in 20 minutes or less. And uh, one of the first paintings that had two or three dots on it that people wanted and Nathan and them got it was the painting that we're going to unveil, which was a beautiful painting. I'll give you a little hint of Melissa. So, uh, it, that, so that, that was what that whole thing was about is the maker's mark. And, you know, when people are at home and having a cocktail or out at a restaurant and with friends. And so the whole show was the idea of warmth of that warm, Amber's of bourbon and, and camaraderie and people together, which, which, and then I came up with the show. And one of the paintings was the one which, should I unveil it? I think you should, but I would, wanted to just share with everybody that this was probably one of the most amazing tours. Many of the people that are on this feed right now, you were able to join us. Um, yeah. Michael Floor became the official artist for Maker's Mark brand. And he has many paintings um, in the lobby there. They commissioned him to do this beautiful piece, but we were able to really get the whole background of this brand and the oh, history yeah. of it. And the title of this piece really, I yeah. think dovetails into the whole experience at Maker's Mark. So this is called Classic Manhattan. Yeah. And obviously the maker's mark is uh, one of the main ingredients if, yeah. for those of you who are fans of the Manhattan, but Michael really nailed it on this particular yeah. painting. It was incredible. And um, I know you've been, he's been hand embellishing every one of the yep. pieces that you collect is hand embellished by the yeah. artist. So you can yep. see um, the amount of work that goes in once he gets a print. So they're all, you know, hand done and they're yeah, um, and the process pretty spectacular. Of the printing and proofing all the colors to get right and we've really got it nailed and um, I'll show you here guys. All right. Here, here it is. <laughs> so this is before the cocktail and then after. Oh wow. So, Bravo Michael. So can you guys see it there? We can see it pretty well. We'll have you talk about it, and then maybe you can bring it towards yeah. the camera so we can really get a good Let me bring it a little closer. There we go. Beautiful. Let's see. So that, does that look better? Yeah, it looks amazing. Really great. Okay, now, now you can really see my hair. But yeah, so this is classic, classic Manhattan. And uh, of Melissa there, and, you know, this could be a bar at a restaurant. This could be your kitchen counter just that moment when you when you see someone just enjoying a, a drink and with the whether it's the sun coming in from the five o'clock cocktail time hour behind the person backlighting them it's it's just that this painting has an overall warm kind of uh relaxing feel to it it looks like you just want to go wherever that is you want to go there and 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 just have a have a have a drink and a, a a moment of quietness. 
Now, I know this one you just started working on. It's not available to the galleries at this very moment. So everybody on this live stream, you're the first ones that are being able to see this new release. It will be coming available depending on, you know, how quickly you can get the pieces into your studio. Yeah. Uh, once life moves on and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to start embellishing these. But if you do them. want to collect one, you can um, get it, put a deposit on one. We're going to be, it's coming out at $1,400. It's, the size is 18 by 36. Yeah, that's awesome. Limited edition of only 90 pieces. And it's a small edition. And you can order it through the gallery that you work with. So, you know, if you're yeah. our collector, we're happy to help you out with it. If you work with another gallery, please contact those galleries. You'll probably surprise them because they don't even know it's available yet. Do you but, want to um, see the, cool, the coolest thing? Yes. Look who walked in with. This is the original hat that I bought with Melissa years ago. So Mel, you got to see it. Okay. There's Mel. Oh, the hat. wow. That's, That's the hat beautiful. That when we, yeah, when we were first dating, we bought that hat, or Melissa bought it, and it was $90. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was so scared because we had no money. And, uh, you know, the hat is definitely – been inspiring and it's been an amazing amazing uh yeah and it's nice because during quarantine when all the yeah. root, the roots are coming out you just throw it on put it over Amen, sister. <laughs> <laughs> so i love cool. it that's great i thought you might like it canvas tightener it could help you with your hair oh yeah cam mel found some canvas <laughs> canvas tightener it might help with my hair keeping it a little bit down hey melissa real, melissa, yeah, real, 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 real quick before you go yeah. So, Melissa, what is it like being an artist, supporting <laughs> another artist's work, and uh, what's that dynamic like? Because I know you do beautiful work yourself. Oh, the question was, I, I missed the. Here, I'm I was take asking, you know, what is it like? You guys are both artists. You're an incredible artist. You've been supporting Michael in his career, and uh, just be, you know, just being an amazing mom and wife i know you still paint what what's that dynamic like with the creativity I, I love that dynamic i think it's so much fun because one of the things that um can be hard as an artist working in a solitary studio um is that connection with other artists and feedback um and it really really helps to have feedback when you're when you're working your paintings yeah we uh, have formed relationships with other artist friends around the area yeah. But it's really nice to have it in-house. Yeah. Well, so, when she sees something in my painting, she's like, oh, that looks off. And I'm like, I didn't notice it. It's nice to have a trained It's like nice eye. to have, yeah, an extra pair of eyes and then just discuss things back and forth. It's really fun, too. And wait till you see when, when Melissa starts painting, she's awesome. You guys, that'll be something to come to keep an eye out for. Absolutely. Thank you, Mel. You're amazing. Sweetheart. Thanks, Ruth Ann. You're amazing, too. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go inside and watch. All, all right. right. Great. Send out one of the monsters. I hijacked your account. I hope you don't mind. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I don't have an account. Cool. The bank account, I hope. Yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. That's Can great. you guys hear me still better with, without the headphone? Well, we can hear you well. So, okay, Michael, cool. you know, with, you know, just a couple words for people about just what it is that you feel the reason why you have devoted your entire life to creating art. I know it's just you, when you're on vacation, I know you bring your sketch pad and I know that you just have this full devotion to your artwork. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, uh, I always tell people it, it's, uh, it's my, it's my addiction for sure. It's, uh, that's, it's not what I do. It's who I am. You know, it's a, uh, yeah, that's the best quote I can see. It's just, I, I have to do it whether I get paid for it or not. If I had to have a regular job, I would still be painting a ton because it's the, yeah, it's a compulsion you have to get out. Like some people who like to exercise, I don't know, who people, I don't know any people like that, but they have to exercise. They got to get it out. And that's for me with painting. I have to. Yeah, All right. Words. Well, you know what, Michael? We got somebody here who wants to say hello to you. What? Who do you got? What? He's coming on. Hey, do I, say, do I say hello appropriately? Yes. 
That's so good. Here's the best uh, custom deck builder in all of Denver right there. That's it. So, uh, Pete? We got one going right now. An oh, avid Hi, Ruthann. Yeah, Pete Hi, is one Pete. of my... I'm doing good, Michael. You look great. Thanks, man. This, Hi, this is Pete. One of my... I had, a hard time, I had a hard time getting on the app, so sorry. I'm well, sorry Pete is one of the top collectors of my work. He has some beautiful pieces. In, uh, I, I absolutely do. So, so Pete, cool I thought you, maybe uh, share a little bit about your experience at Maker's Mark. Uh, experience at Maker's Mark. Wow, you're jumping ahead about eight years after I met Michael. Fun I enough. know. Um, I'd like to just start by, can I just say, I, I ended up buying one of, I think I bought Chow Bella. Yeah. And then uh, the rest was original. And I just love your stuff. Up in the Breckenridge Ruth, days. And invited us to Maker's Mark to do the uh, yeah back in the Breckenridge days yeah now Ruth Ann invited us to do this uh, thing at Maker's Mark uh, to meet Rob and Bill Samuels Bill was a blast to meet the old man oh, yeah. and, uh, Rob was great we did our share of uh, old fashions and had a wonderful dinner on you guys and thank you oh yeah um, when I you picked up a piece there and uh, you know admired a bunch of other work and I wish I would have got the study of the uh, Maker's Mark uh, uh, D distillery yeah and you've been such a, a you've been really you've been such a great collector of mine for the last 15 years from the gallery so you've been yeah. uh i mean i if, if i could it's been amazing go ahead we really we yeah. really appreciate you I, I just i enjoy your work uh if i can say to the audience yeah yeah i, I appreciate you too michael <laughs> Thank you, no, Pete. Uh, Thanks for jumping in with us. Absolutely. I'm sorry there's feedback and stuff oh, it's okay. like that. But you would not you would not want me out there building that deck with you. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, we're we're all locked down on quarantine, but I snuck out to do work. But hey. just to show you what my day's like, here's my day. Nice. See? Beautiful. Yeah, see? <laughs> Gotta come out and do some work for you, Michael, huh? There you go. Hey, Ruth, the gallery looks great there. Michael, are you home? I hope you are. Yeah. Things look good right there. I'm home. Yeah, I've been there. And uh, we just unveiled the limited edition of this print. So it's been it's been good. I've been stuck inside painting and having uh, Maker's Mark cocktails every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> What's she called? What's this piece called? Classic Manhattan. Ooh. Oh. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Ruth Ann, send me information on it. I certainly will, Pete. All right, stay safe, sterilize, talk to you later. Safe. Okay, we'll bye. Bye, Michael. Bye, Ruth. Bye. Thank you. How cool. Well, so Michael. This is our first virtual release of a print. Pretty cool. It's really cool. And, Michael, I just want to tell you on behalf of myself, the other galleries, and all these collectors on the feed that are coming through, thank you so much for letting us in your home and taking the time to share your work with us. Oh, and yeah. And you were um, also saying there was a collector that um, recently um, is going to do a, a, a commission of one of my umbrella scenes of them. Yes, so they're, all, they're all on as we speak also. So oh, I'm sure hey you know, having a private phone conversation with them to do commissions. So it's really did. nice to see people bringing art into their homes. Um, you know, even under these trying times, I think that's one of the beauties of art is it just... Oh, yeah. You know, keeps us focused on all of the beauty. Here's one of, here's one of my masterpieces right here. Lila. So this is my my youngest, almost 10 years old. On April 17th, she'll be 10. Say hi to Ruth Ann. You know Ruth Ann. Yeah, let's see how this hi, Lila. Going. Are you painting? Oh, look Lila? at Lila. Oh, look at She's got the Mel hat on. Oh, that is Ruth so Ann's going to ask you something. I was asking Lila if you were, you're a painter also. If you're a painter, you like painting. Yeah. Yeah, she's a really good drawer. She loves drawing. Like I'll do exercises. She'll say, "Dad, pick an animal and I'll draw it." So I'll say giraffe, and she'll try to draw it out of her head, and she does a really good job. Okay, we've got a next uh, bunch of um, new uh, floors that will be coming on the scene. Next generation of artists. So we'll look forward these are, to that. These are my floor princesses. That's awesome. I love it. Say well, bye, Lila. Bye. It was awesome talking with you guys. And uh, 
look forward to seeing you guys uh, next. We're going to do this on, am I going to be Wednesdays? Or are we just we'll going to probably keep following you? I'll, I'm going okay. to pop in maybe, um, you know, unannounced. Yeah. Let me know. And uh, you like the hairdo. I'll show, yeah. I'll, I'll get my hair better next time. Okay. Michael. Next time I'm gonna... thank you again. Really. Bye, appreciate you guys. It. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right, so that's been our first segment, and um, this is going to continue to get better and better. So please, if you have any comments, please leave them. Do us a big favor and share this with your Facebook friends, Art of the City TV. Anybody that you might think would be great on the show, we've got the artists, but we need the musicians. We've got some uh, chefs lined up for the next one, a couple of really cool uh, cooking demos that are coming, and then also some winemakers that will be sharing about uh, fine vintage. If you're interested, again, in collecting these pieces, this one, by the way, is a uh, $6,000 piece that Michael has this one available that he's allowing us to uh, make available to one person because we only have one. And so if you're interested in that, private message me and I'll um, give you the pricing on that. Um, but we're so thrilled to start this platform. I know it's been a tough time for all of us, but art is that one thing that we can count on. I always like, I have this little phrase that is, art is forever and forever is a very long time. So you can count on the artwork around your home to continue to bring you joy day after day, not only for yourself, but the next generation, your kids, kind of like you see with Michael and his kids. And Make sure you join in Friday, same time, 1 p.m. We're going to be unveiling um, my very favorite artist and the person that brought me into this world, my very one and only, Gloria Lee. She has a whole new uh, series of paintings that we're going to unveil that are uh, skylines of the city. It's a departure from her florals. I'm very excited. But the show must go on. So we're going to unveil those Friday at 1 p.m. We also will have some special guests on that show. So please share with your friends and thank you so much for joining Art of the City TV. There'll be lots more to come and we look forward to seeing you here on this live feed. Thanks so much and we'll see you soon.